Hello and welcome back to what will be the last episode of the USA campaign in Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Uh, so th thank you all for uh, having watched this far. And uh, yeah, sorry, I know a lot of you are uh, invested in this campaign, but it's it's time to let it go and start something new. I do want to get the uh, the new 1.5 patch, which has a lot of nice things that I want to try out. And uh, I'm not going to play all the way until 1965 to end this campaign. That would take, I don't know, another month. So we're just going to end it after this episode. We're going to play the battles we have uh, lined up. And then take a look in the uh, in the shipyard designer thing and just look at all the ships we have all the different classes uh, including the museum ships so first off let's uh, let's sink some Austrian ships all right we're already uh, firing we got the USS Liberty and freedom torpedo boats and go home only one DD. All right, let's send you home as well. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, the medium cruisers. All right, and a couple of light cruisers. Do you want to have the uh, have the light cruisers follow the battleships? Seeing as the medium cruisers are actually uh, actually faster by one knot. Let's take a look at the oh something sank. I'm assuming that's a torpedo boat or a DD. I want to have my battleships focus. Is that a heavy cruiser? I think that's a heavy cruiser, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a ship, all right. Do they have another heavy cruiser? Yeah, they do. Here it is. So you're gonna have some. Uh, you're gonna get some freedom, my friend. There we go. And I'm just counting on my my own cruisers to take care of the uh, the DDs and the torpedo boats. Oh wow, this cruiser got a whole bunch of hurt. Let's take a look at torpedo ranges. Not quite in range of that one, whatever it is. Definitely in range of that one. And that one. Okay, so uh, it might be safe to assume that torpedoes are in the water from the ones with very long ranges. Yeah, there we go. Got nine torpedo hits. I don't have any torpedoes other than on the ships I sent home, so. <laughs> Someone launched those, and it was not me. Let's see, my cruisers are absolutely murdering ships. Is that the, uh... That was the cruiser, I think. 
Yeah, it was. Means we have a new target for uh, Liberty. Maybe this one? Well, they only have DDs and Torpedo Boats left, so... Uh, Liberty, you can just target whatever you want to. I think the other cruiser sank as well. Yeah, I think it did. It did. And that was a good looking cruiser too. I think we saw one of its classes in uh, in a previous episode. Yeah, sorry for not catching that on uh, on screen. But I'm kind of busy maneuvering a squadron of cruisers within the enemy torpedo range. to not be a torpedo boat. There we go. Uh, you have launched. You did 59,000 damage with 9 torpedo hits on something. It's gonna be interesting to find out <laughs> what ate those 9, nine torpedoes because it was not any of my ships. Let's see. Damage dealt. 59,000. You did the most damage <laughs> in the Austrian fleet. Congratulations. Nine torpedo hits. Yeah, you hit another uh, DD. One of your sisters with nine torpedoes. That's. How many torpedo tubes do you have? Two times five deck torpedo tubes, so. Ten launches in a spread. 90% hit rate. With a. Uh, with the single uh, volley. Single spread of torpedoes. That's. Almost impressive. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. What's next? We got, other than naval invasions, we got an ambush, two convoys, and a battle. Let's check out the naval invasions. Not that we're going to give them time to succeed. Uh, this one potentially could succeed. If only there weren't any Italians here. This one is currently not succeeding. But it could if we moved uh, this task force down here. Alright, Panama. Notoro class battlecruiser. Oh wow, that's impressive. More 18.2 inch guns. Same as on the Mega Yamato, it's actually slower than the Mega Yamato. It's much cheaper. It's almost uh, it was a little more than... What was... The Mega Yamato was almost four, 4 billion. So you could get almost 8 of these for the, uh, for the price of one Mega Yamato. Or whatever it was called. It's kind of impressive what they cooked up. This invasion, only only 53%. I would have thought it was uh, it would be more. Anyway, it's not that important. Let's do the ambush battle. 
we got four DD-45s going up against two Tonnant class heavy cruisers. Those are kind of slow for heavy cruisers. And then Arethus class light cruiser, which is very fast. Operated by a crew of Belgians. Let's go. All right. Torpedoes off. We're gonna do a cross torp thing. If we're gonna have any hope of um, getting torpedoes in target, ooh, wow. Oh, pause. Let's see. You. You. You and you. There we go, torpedoes are in the water. Why are you not launching? There we go. I was looking away and I ate a bunch of torpedoes. Man, we started very close. scored eight torpedo hits though so it's not all bad uh, 45 12 is probably gonna sink 45 10 45 11 you're kind of good to go no you're not these cruisers are just too deadly. You cannot get close enough to engage them with guns without eating way too much fire. Just gonna try to retreat. Uh, Forty-five ten, probably not gonna make it. What kind of armor. I don't think guns would do this, not with a 4 inch main belt. Come on, you're almost out of range. No, you did not make it. And you're being engaged by the light cruiser as well. Let's get the 4511 home. At least. If it's at all possible. I don't think we're going to get gun kills on the light cruiser either. Not very long range torpedoes. I 
don't think I can outrun the the light cruiser though. No, no, definitely not, and definitely not after taking this much flooding. What could be done? Like normally in ambush missions, starting close to the enemy is an advantage because you just want to get in close and launch torpedoes. But not in 1952. They're just uh, the guns are just too accurate. So starting further away would actually be better because then I could uh, make more use of my very long torpedo range. La Motte Piquette. I'm gonna wait for these torps to reload. And we're gonna do a Hail Mary and uh, try and kill this light cruiser. Let's see. Very long reload time, but we're playing on times five game speed, so it's not really that bad. What kind of gun range did you have? 16 kilometers on your 4 inch guns. This is like the ultimate uh, DD killing uh, light cruiser. There you go, my torpedoes are in the water. I want to keep sailing straight. Hoping that the enemy will keep sailing straight. actually closing in. Oh. Those torpedoes are not gonna hit. Now we're about to get uh, sh shredded by 4.3 inch guns that we cannot outrun, not out spot, not out torpedo. They actually, they're not actually closing in for the kill either. Which they very well could do. No, I cannot pen that. Would have been so nice if some of those torpedoes would have connected to this cruiser. There we go. I actually got away. It was a defeat, but uh, yeah, we did some damage. But it's not a total disaster, and at least we got one ship away. Well, let's see if we have more luck in the next three engagements. Let's do Panama versus uh, Xiaomi.
Now they got bigger guns. That's for sure. Panama has 14s. But the Armark 5. I do not think the 18s on this. No, only 18.6 kilometers. Might not even be Mark 4. Let's take a look. I mean, it's not terrible looking. No, the 8 inch guns have an 18 kilometer range. My bad. The 18s have a 36.8 kilometer range. So they probably are Mark IV and they probably are firing Cap Ballistic II. That makes it kind of dangerous. But it doesn't look like it has a lot of armor. It wouldn't, right? Not with uh, having to carry guns that big. It's got the conning tower. Including the fire control. That will be helpful. Because I would not like to take that many hits from 18.2 uh, inch guns. Punching holes in it. Which is nice. Only 500 million for a battlecruiser with massive guns like that. It's really not bad. No matter what kind of shortcomings it has. if you can get it um, identified before it goes down or before it sinks us could very easily swing in um, its favor it just gets a couple of good hits in and I think we're winning this ammo detonation Probably secondary is going up. Okay, let's turn the guns off. No, nope. too late. I was gonna just uh, try and keep it alive a little bit more to identify it. Oh well. Notoro class. Yeah, with that kind of range, the guns would have to be at least Mark IV. And uh, probably firing Cap Ballistic. If they'd just been able to score more hits, it would have uh, been very bad for the USS Panama. Alright, a couple of convoy battles. Saratoga and Wales fighting a Colombo class battleship. What's this now? Is that an older ship? It might actually be. It's Ottoman. Who knows when they bought it? Alright, let's go. Interesting. Are 
are we just gonna have both of them um, move in formation? Might as well. It's a foggy day. It's not super old. It doesn't look super old. So that's the battle cruiser. That's the battleship. The battle cruiser actually has more firepower, just in the number of uh, fourteen point four inch guns. Those. Yeah, Saratoga, you can just target the battle cruiser first. Should be an easier kill. Whales. You're gonna target the lighter ships. What kind of torpedoes did you have? Might be in range. Not sure. That the battle cruiser? Couldn't have been. No, it was a transport. Of course, it's a convoy battle. Duh. That's why there are so many enemy ships. Not because they have a bunch of torpedoes and uh, destroyers. I knew that. So the uh, number of ships they had before I started the mission. Duh. So only a battle cruiser and a battleship left. I'm just gonna let the whales finish off the uh, focus on the warships and just let the secondaries handle the transports as we sail past. There we go. The transports have been handled. Can we actually kill these two ships though? I set the Saratoga to focus the battleship. Our Wales takes on the battle cruiser. Not sure if that was actually a good idea. see once they are identified. You can have lots of secondary guns on the battle cruiser. Does it have a lot of secondary guns? Uh, yeah, quite a few. So, crew loss? Surrendering? It's a possibility. Wales is firing AP now, she's out of HE. She was in a battle the previous turn, there we go. The battlecruiser Bastarda has been identified. It's got some armor, 8.8 .8 on all the belts. 11.4 on the main deck. So quite well protected, they have Mark V 14 inch guns. That is no joke. 
as we just saw the Panama deal with that huge Japanese battlecruiser. So yeah, that's not a bad design. It's got okay armor. I would have liked a little bit more on the main belt, but all in all, it's not too bad. Coincidence for Gen 1 radar. Diesel 2. It's got torpedoes, of course, because it's an AI ship. Capitalistic 2, AP, Incendiary HE. Battleship, not yet identified. We're gonna let the, uh, the Bastarda be on the... Uh, The thumbnail. I think we might. Just trying to not get the uh, distortion to make the mass look weird. There we go. Yeah, Saratoga, you're gonna also focus the uh, the Bastarda now. So we've identified that it has pretty decent firepower. And it's the closest one to sinking. I wanna finish the job. So it had eight 14.4 inch guns, which is actually more than the uh, the battleship. It only had six. But let's see when it's identified. Are right, those also Mark fours, uh, Mark fives? Colombo. Let's take a look. Mark 5, yeah, very long range. Capped, not capitalistic. 12.8 main belt, 6.3 main deck. I think this is a better armor layout. But the other one was also not bad. Decently fast. It just doesn't really have enough firepower for a uh, almost 70,000 ton battleship. Needed more main gun turrets and less secondary spam. You will kill it though. Well, else you're gonna detach. You're kind of zooming out. Point three crew loss. Maybe the secondary guns just aren't uh, spacious quarters. Okay. Gear turbines two, radar two. Hoping I can get one of my ships to get a clean flat angle on the enemy ship. And Saratoga might get it. Floating yet, that is the power of having a decent uh, armor layout. We're at only 13 kilometers away 
we get a little bit closer, we can start getting main belt penetrations. With the whales. There we go. Picking up engines. kilometers away, more than enough pen at this range. And those fast firing 12 inch guns. Being very effective. Heading in the fog. There we go, sank. Just trying to get around it on this side. Not bad. Two new ships identified and sunk. It's almost too bad. We're not going to be fighting them more because, uh, yeah, large task force made out of multiple of those ships. That would be quite uh, quite the challenge. And the last one. What do we have? Brooklyn and Los Angeles versus a Volta class battlecruiser, a DD, four transports. Two San Diegos. If there were any two heavy cruiser classes, well, any two ships of a heavy cruiser class, I wanted to have. And going up against a battlecruiser, it would be a couple of San Diegos. Let's do this. Alright. Let's see. What do we have? Get the DD first. I can't really hurt the, uh, the battlecruiser at this range and angle anyway. You're going to be firing HE at that guy, my guys. We are low on ammo. There go the torpedoes. No, no, no. Main guns on the battlecruiser. Do not waste your main gun shells on the transports. Not when you are this low on ammo. There we go. Only the battlecruiser left, so... We're going to have no more issues with uh, target switching. I'm locking to HC at the moment. I don't think AP can pen at that angle. I'm just going to fire off what we have while getting closer. Guns off until you have a better angle because you're very low on ammo. We're catching up, and the five inch guns are in range. We are causing flooding. Both guns on. Yeah, I think we 
can pen it at this range. At least the four and a half belts. Nevada. Flash fire. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, because the turrets didn't have that much armor. Let's see, it still has some secondary guns. With crew that we can kill. Towards a surrender kill. But it's also... Yeah, I think... Yeah. Any which way, we're gonna kill it. Might not be flooding unless we can get around to its side and go through the uh, the main belt. But we might be able to do that. At least if we uh, split our ships and approach from uh, two directions. Oh, never mind. It went down. And that was the last battle of the campaign. So now we're just going to take a look at some ships because that was requested. All right, so yeah, this is our empire as it stands currently, the global American empire. We got the entire Chinese coastline and um, had this gone on longer, we would have gotten eventually Formosa or uh, Taiwan as it's uh, known today. Probably also the Korean peninsula to connect our Chinese coastline with the Russian Far East. And would have gotten most of the big islands in the Mediterranean. Like Sicily is great for naval bases because you got Catania with almost 400,000 uh, tons and Messina with 500,000 tons and also Palermo. So suddenly you can stash some pretty big task forces in uh, in the Mediterranean, if you have Cecilia. Other than that, yeah. Would eventually also have gotten Chile. And uh, kept foreign influence out of South America. In terms of uh, GDP, we're at 2.5, almost 2.6 trillion. Which is nice. Uh, it's kind of dwarfed by Austria-Hungary at <laughs> almost four and a half, and the Soviet Union. And a growth, six, six point one percent percent growth annually, when at war is really not bad. And probably the the nations I'm fighting would have lost some of their allies, just from. Um, unrest. The minor allies do not like it when a nation has a lot of unrest. Which would probably funnel some of them to me. Uh, Italy also decent GDP. Britain tiny. Japan also kind of on the small side. And yeah, I think... Uh, Although it's very hard to do uh, to catch up to Austria-Hungary in terms of GDP, the Austria-Hungary either collapses at the start of the campaign, or they just uh, become this economical powerhouse. There's really no in between. Yeah, I think uh, globally on the map, we're in a very good, uh, very good place. We can fight four major nations at once, beating them all and not really feel as if our navy is stretched beyond its limits. 
Like, I can even have a huge task force down here invading Chile, just because. So, oh, don't I have to... Uh, shouldn't you be in Port Louis? That's where you were supposed to be. And generate uh, convoy missions. But okay. Yeah, let's take a look at the ships that we have uh, grown to love during the campaign. And um, that will be that. So I preserved one of these, one of the Connecticut's and a Pennsylvania as museum ships. Also preserved an Albany class as a museum ship. First heavy cruiser class armed with 7 inch guns. Because I think the 7s started out at Mark IV. That's why I went with the 7s. They became kind of outdated uh, rather quickly. But it was a decent uh, early game heavy cruiser design. And I'm not going to go through all the refits because, well, uh, the game is kind of slow at loading uh, loading ships. But the um, the Colorados and Connecticut's were continuously refit to get. Did they get the Mark Fives? I think the Colorados got Mark Five 16 inch guns. And were kept in service for a couple of years before being retired. Then the next heavy cruiser uh, design was the the Memphis with 9 inch guns. They did not have a very long serve. Maybe they did have a decently long service life. I don't quite remember. There were also like decent ships for uh, their time, but not very, uh, very impressive. At least uh, not compared to later designs. And let's see, by request from comments, I also designed the New York and New Mexico class. Although they look a little wonky, they were, uh, because they were refit with the uh, the Mark V 14 inch guns, which are a little big. So that's what they look like. Very uh, busy design. I think you could say the uh, the New Yorks and New Mexicos were actually pre World War One designs. At least the New Yorks. I think the New Mexicos were as well, and they uh, served throughout World War Two. So they got quite a few refits. Of course, I built them, designed them in uh, like the mid to late nineteen twenties. I think. So I just went for a um, kind of what they looked like at that time, after they had a couple of refits already. They're not perfect uh, copies or anything, but kind of got the point across with the uh, with the main gun layout. They were really more or less outdated as soon as they were uh, launched, though. Well, let's take a look at some of the more modern ships. Missoula class heavy cruisers. Armed with 11 inch guns. They were kind of overshadowed by the later um, San Diego class, also armed with uh, 12 11 inch guns. But they're quite quite sleek and good looking ships in their own um, in their own way uh, let's see Panama class battlecruiser 12 14 inch guns I built four of them they've been mostly just operating in their own task force 
in the Pacific for most of their career. So not being, and because they spent a lot of time doing naval invasions, they did not see as much um, action fighting um, convoys and stuff as did the Alaska class, which you can see here. Now the Alaskas, uh, decently fast, 35 knots, good range, very good at uh, killing cruisers and some battle cruisers. But for killing battleships, they were just not quite as effective as the Lexington class with their 16 inch guns, which you can see here. Armed with 8 16 inch guns and a top speed of 34 knots. They were very good, like heavy battle cruisers, almost fast battleships. But they kind of didn't offer that much when compared to the Iowa class. Let's just go by the latest refit. I think I deleted the original uh, design. And I did build four of the Iowas. Named them the same as the real ones were named. So Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri and New Jersey. Very good ships served throughout the campaign. I think they were the first modern uh, battleships I built. And well, yeah, you could see uh, what they did in the last episode when going up against the Mega Yamato. Uh, I think I've missed quite a few ships here. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through all of them. Cleveland's also had a very good career. One of the later light cruiser designs I made, but they just turned out to be very good. So I copied them and made the Cleveland 2, which is uh, basically a copy of the last Cleveland class refit, just so I could build them as that. Good ships? Not really that much to say. Um, yeah, 7 inch guns, 12 of them, so uh, same size of guns, but more than my first heavy cruiser design, the USS Albany class. And of course very late on in the campaign we got the uh, the Florida man, USS Florida class, and the Ireland class battle cruiser. US battle cruisers are large cruisers, they only built uh, two of them I think in real life, the Alaska and Guam, named after territories. And the good thing about taking so many uh, so many provinces all over the world is I ended up with a bunch of territories to name my battle cruisers after. So that's why they're named like Ireland and Wales and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Where's the America class? First super battleship class. I don't remember how many of these I built. I know I did lose one of them in a battle against the British. It was just overwhelmed. They had a lot of battleships at one point. They were initially built with 20 inch guns, but I regunned them with 17.5s. Um, and made that the standard caliber for my super battleships, and I think it worked much better. Uh, 16 and 17 inch guns, when you have increased ammo, or at any ammo uh, level, they have 10% more ammo per barrel than uh, 18, 19 and 20 inch guns. Well, that's uh, that's a nice little uh, little bonus. So, of course, faster rate of fire, so you run out of ammo at the same pace, more or less. But 
Still, more shells to kill uh, more ships. And they don't do... Well, they do less damage, but... Yeah, I just find them... They, they worked out better than the 20-inch guns. Not really that much you can't pen with a 17.5-inch. Cap Ballistic 2 shell from a uh, Mark V gun that you cannot pen with the uh, with the 20-inch gun. Let's see, what else do we want to take a look at here? Uh, maybe some DDs. DD32, 1940 refit. One of the first DD designs in the campaign that really ended up um, performing well. With eight 5-inch guns housed in four double turrets and uh, torpedoes. Let's see. 22-inch torpedoes. Not that fast when initially built, but they got a refit in 1940, bumping the, them up to 38 knots, which made them a little bit more survivable, because going fast is uh, kind of crucial for a DD to stay alive. Also some torpedo boats here, mostly just used as uh, fleet escorts. In naval arms race, torpedo boats never go um, obsolete, so you can build them throughout the campaign. But their main purpose is basically just to protect your fleet from submarines and minefields, because they can mount minehunter kits and depth charges, same as the DD. But they're just a lot cheaper. My latest uh, torpedo boat design only cost uh, 19 million, compared to almost 300 million for the DD-46 but they die in pretty much one hit, so... Yeah. I think that's it for our ships that I wanted to take a look at, because the game just takes so long to load <laughs> each new ship, but let's take a look at the uh, at the captured ships. Because I did have a couple. And here's one. The Slava of the Volia class. Taken from the Russians as war operations. Armed with... Uh, it's a 1929 design. So it's got Mark II 15.1 inch guns. And a top speed of 15 knots. I don't think I actually encountered any of these in combat. So... When I just uh, picked some random ships to take as war operations, I was hoping I was getting one of their later, more modern ships. It does look good. I'm not going to deny that. It it looks like a uh, almost could be a human designed ship. Aside from some weird barbettes randomly scattered. But yeah, being an AI design, it's uh it is kind of weird. Especially with the 15 uh, knot top speed. Correct MD and Amatol. So it would be quite explosive, I think. Yeah, flash fire channel is almost 40%. And, uh, yeah. Despite two funnels and a top speed of only 15 knots and 300% engine efficiency, the AI gave it minus 13 draft and plus 8.7 beam. Now, decreasing draft decreases uh, range, increasing it increases it. Uh, beam is inverse, increasing beam decreases your range and decreasing your beam increases it, although not by that much. So that's how you end up with only quote unquote 19,000 kilometer range, even with the range slider maxed out and an engine efficiency of 300%. So. When you're building ships, if you want your ships to not have terrible range, don't max out the beam, don't decrease the draft. It would probably be very stable though. Um, I think I got one more ship from the Russians.
yeah, we got the Battlecruiser Vladimir with a very weird uh, barbette layout. Armed with Mark II 18.2 inch guns. What year was this made? Uh, I don't know, we can check later. Again, poor range. But this time, because the range slider is set at minimum, it's got minus 50. Uh, Five, uh, minus 5.8% 5 beam, minus 5.5 5 draft. So it's uh, it's affordable, if nothing else. It's got some speed, but not amazing. It's got it's actually got decent armor. Uh, except on the turret sides, that would have been its major weak point, I think. I'm not sure if I actually encountered any of these in the campaign. Um, barrel length, minus 7%. That's not very good for a Mark II gun. Although, they do have decent pen for what they are, but minus barrel length and Mark II, accuracy would probably have suffered Otherwise, it has Gen 1 radar and uh, diesel 1 semi fuel. I don't know how you run a diesel on a mix of <laughs> coal and fuel, but okay. I guess rolling coal is a thing. And that's it. That's my other uh, Russian trophy ship. I'm not going to say it's good looking. And here's the final fleet roster. You can see first off it's the uh, museum fleet. Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Albany, Colorado and West Virginia. So I actually preserved two of the Colorados. Memphis, well the captured Slava. Wichita, New York, New Mexico. And then we have in service four of the Baltimore class. Heavy cruisers armed with 10 inch guns. We've got four of the Iowas. And not just two, but three North Carolinas. And third one built a little bit later. And more museum ships the Atlanta and Minneapolis. Oh, the Worcester class. R quite recently uh, retired. Actually, they had a pretty long service life. One of the E-30 class torpedo boats. Uh, then we have three New Haven class light cruisers. I think I lost one. There were originally four. And four, five, six, seven, eight, nine DD-32s. I think 12 were built to begin with. Four Alaska class battlecruisers, four Lexington class battlecruisers, four Missoula class heavy cruisers. Uh, I don't think they ever got a refit. Uh, they are a 1939 design though, so they're quite new. And how many DD 37s refit in 1949? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Is that all 12 of them? Have I not lost a single DD 37 class? No, I must have. I must have lost 4 because they go all the way up to 16. Let's do the DD 32s. So. Must have lost quite a few of those as well. Not really surprising. Then we got the... United States of the America class. I think I... Yeah, no, I think I only built two of them. And one was lost. Then four of the Panamas. 
They're all in Vladivostok. Okay, I forgot I had them in the port there. Indianapolis. We got seven of them. One has been lost. I think I built eight. E39 class torpedo boats. Uh, they've also suffered quite a few losses. I built 20 of them. As you can see, there are some gaps in the numbers. But yeah, they did a good job protecting my fleet from submarines, but they were also dragged into battles and uh, they got lost. San Diego class heavy cruisers. I built 12. I have 12. Very good class of ships. Very similar in capabilities to the Missoula class. I just decided to build way more of them, so you will have seen more of them than the Missoulas, but not really that much better or worse. Just more numerous. And probably better. Montana class. Four of them. Super battleships. Freedom, Liberty, Constitution, and America. Built after the loss of uh, the original USS America. Although they are called the Montana class, I renamed the, uh, the lead ship to Freedom. Because I wanted a different naming convention for the super battleship. So I give the name Montana to one of the South Dakota class. Battleships. Built at more or less the same time. Built for them. Basic fast battleships. Nine 16 inch guns. Not really that much to say. Fargo class light cruisers. I think I built eight. I've got seven remaining. Uh, decent fast light cruisers. Six inch guns. DD 46s. I built eight. I got seven. So one has been lost. Very expensive. So expensive that I decided to design the DD-45s afterwards as a cheaper alternative, although some of these have also been lost. Uh, some of them in this episode. And more torpedo boats. Let's not forget the Cleveland class light cruisers. A very successful design. All 12 are remaining in service. And then copy the Cleveland 2. All 12 are remaining in service. Not bad. Then we have the Florida men. Six of them built. Didn't uh, have time to see that much uh, action. You will have seen them in uh, one of the very recent episodes. Ireland class. I've seen a lot of action for how new they are. Being dragged into a bunch of convoy battles. Belfast class heavy cruisers. The last class of heavy cruisers built or uh, designed. More like medium cruisers when compared to stuff like the San Diego's and Missoula's. And even the older Baltimore's. While 8 inch guns are historical uh, calibers for Heavy cruisers in this game it's kind of on the light side but they've done a very good job killing DDs, torpedo boats and light cruisers and that's all they needed to do and I'm building three ships for Norway my last remaining ally so that's it that's the fleet review part of the episode and that's the end of the USA campaign could probably have gone on a little bit longer, but I really need to uh, start working on the Italian campaign. Things were getting a little bit samey, but I'm very happy that you've been watching for this long and enjoying it. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the next one too. Goodbye, and take care.